Hello and welcome to CVAT Academy, your go-to training hub for mastering data annotation with CVAT. In this video, we'll go over the CVAT's automated labeling tools. We'll see how each one works and how they can help speed up the annotation process. Let's get started. The tools for this are located here. The first one, in the form of a magic wand, is called AI Tools, and the second one is Open CV Tools. AI Tools contains the following types of tools, interactors, detectors, and trackers. Detectors are models that allow automatic annotation of images. They find objects on their own, determine their positions and boundaries in the frame, and assign labels to them. This way, the annotator is not involved in the process. However, it's important to understand that even the most advanced models are not perfect. They can miss some objects, outline boundaries inaccurately, assign the wrong label, or even annotate things that aren't needed. In CVAT, a popular model called YOLO is installed by default. It can automatically annotate various objects. Each model has its own label names. If your project or task uses different label names, you can match them manually here. The list of labels from the model is shown on the left, and the available labels for the task are shown on the right. If some labels match, CVAT will match them automatically. In this case, YOLO has the label person, and our task has the same label, so this label was matched automatically. In the threshold field, you can set the model's threshold. In simple terms, this is its confidence level. You can set the maximum value of one, which equals 100% confidence, and the minimum value of 0.01, which equals 1% confidence. For example, if we set the threshold to 50%, the model will only display objects it is confident about at least 50%. If we set the threshold to 80%, only the clearest and most trustworthy results will be kept, but some good results, for example, those with 75% confidence, may be lost. In short, high threshold equals fewer objects, fewer errors. Low threshold equals more objects, higher chance of false positives. We can also leave this field empty, and the value from the model settings will be used by default. To run automatic annotation, click Annotate. After this, wait a moment, and the current frame will be annotated. When starting the automatic annotation from the annotation interface, it will only annotate the current frame. To annotate the rest of the frames, you'll have to move to each one and launch the process individually. However, you can run automatic annotation for the entire task at once. Go to the task page. On the task page, click Actions and select Automatic Annotation. Then choose the model, match labels if needed. If the task already contains some annotation, you can remove it beforehand. Leave the threshold values as defaults and click Annotate. After that, a progress bar will appear and you wait until the automatic annotation is completed. Once the automatic annotation is done, return to the task. Let's review the results. As we can see, in some images, the model struggled and failed to detect most objects, while in others, it detected nearly all of them. Let's examine this annotation more closely. In the appearance settings, change color by to instance and enable outlined borders to make it visually easier to distinguish objects and their boundaries. On the first frame, almost all people in the foreground were annotated, while almost all people who were overlapped remained unannotated. So the first problem a model can encounter is overlapping objects. As we can see, it struggles to recognize them. Moving to the next frame. Here, out of five people, only three were annotated, and two of the annotated people have incorrect bounding boxes. The rest of the people in the frame were missed. When objects are in a non-standard pose, which the model likely wasn't trained on, such instances are also overlooked. Now the third frame. This frame is noisy due to the rain and some people aren't in focus. This is the third problem with such models. They struggle with images that have noise or low quality. We can try to lower the threshold for the model and it will be able to find a few more people, but it still won't detect the rest. Moving to the next frame. Here, the model didn't find any person, even though they are clearly distinguishable visually. Even if we try annotation with a lower threshold, the model still can't locate anything. So, these models have difficulty with distant and small objects. In the next frame, the model performed better and annotated almost all the people. Let's run the process with a lower threshold, and the model will annotate the remaining people. In the final frame, everyone was annotated except a few people far in the distance, partially cropped by the frame and one person in an unusual pose. To summarize, when using automatic annotation, you need to understand in which cases the model might make mistakes. This allows you to use automatic annotation more effectively. 
to speed up the annotation process as much as possible, plan result verification correctly, and reduce the number of critical errors. For the YOLO model, these usually occur in strongly overlapped objects, objects located far away or in an unusual pose, frames with unconventional angles, images with high noise levels or low quality. It's also important to select the right threshold value. At low thresholds, the model may produce too many false positives, which then have to be found and deleted manually, a time-consuming process. Now let's consider the interactors. Interactors are models that require human interaction to work. You guide them by indicating what needs to be annotated with a point or a box, and then the model creates a mask or a polygon. In CVOT, the segment Anything Model or SAM is set as the default interactor. This interactor allows you to annotate objects in semi-automatic mode using masks or polygons. To use the interactor, you first need to select a label here. Interactors have no pre-assigned labels, so they can work with any object. You simply select the label you need from those added to the task. Below is the list of available interactors. Currently, Sam is the only one. To start annotating using the interactor, click the Interact button. Place the first point on the object. After this, the frame processing begins. This may take some time, and its duration depends on the size of the image, but it only happens once per frame. When annotating other objects in this frame, reprocessing is not required. After processing, you'll see how the final mask will look. The point you placed is called a positive point. It's added with the left mouse button and is used to indicate the object or its parts that you want to annotate. The right mouse button adds negative points, which appear in red and mark areas you don't want to annotate. You can add as many positive or negative points as needed until you get the desired result. To remove a point, click it with the left mouse button. To finish the annotation, press N or click the Done button. For the next bird, enable this switch, and instead of a mask, a polygon will be created. Here you can also set the level of polygon detail. And the number of points can be configured in the settings. Annotate the next bird and enable the final switch. It allows you to limit the area of interest using a bounding box. This is best used for complex or large objects. Let's talk about annotation quality. As you can see, Sam handles annotating these birds quite well, although it sometimes misses small details. It's worth noting that the image itself is sharp and the objects have relatively strong contrast. Move to the next frame and try annotating this airplane using the bounding box. We'll also refine some details that Sam missed. Here, the background and the object are slightly more challenging, so even when using the bounding box, Sam didn't capture all the details in the first iteration, but the result is still good. Moving on. Let's turn off the bounding box, but before placing points, click Block. This allows you to set several positive points before the image is processed. Let's try annotating an umbrella. To start processing, click Block again, or press the Tab key. Annotate a few more objects in the frame. You can use the N key to quickly reactivate the interactor and begin annotating another object. Although Sam annotates objects well overall, it still has certain limitations and shortcomings, which are evident in this frame. The lower the contrast between the object and the background, the less accurate the mask boundaries will be. This is why you can see gaps between masks, especially noticeable between the cat and the umbrella, where the boundary is hard to distinguish. Moving to the next frame, we make the task harder for Sam. This image has fairly good quality, and to the human eye, the birds have clear, distinguishable contours. However, when trying to use Sam for annotating these birds, it struggles with almost everyone. It captures the main part of the object, but doesn't pick up the finer details. This is due to several reasons. A noisy background, unclear boundaries, and sharp transitions. As a result, Sam works better on rounded and smooth shapes, while it struggles more with angular details, sharp edges, or many small elements. 
making it harder for the model to clearly distinguish the object. Let's look at the final frame and try annotating this airplane. We'll start by labeling the larger and clearer parts, and so far, this doesn't cause any issues. However, as we try to capture smaller details, more artifacts appear. In such cases, annotating a complex object can be challenging. It might require a lot of time, manual correction, or splitting it into smaller parts and merging them later. This approach gives more control and ultimately a better result, which can be refined manually. SAM is a powerful and convenient tool that significantly speeds up annotation, especially when objects have clear boundaries and strong contrast with the background. However, it is not without its limitations. SAM may fail to precisely define boundaries when dealing with blurred edges, complex shapes, such as many sharp angles or highly detailed areas, or a highly varied background. For some projects, this can be critically important. Additionally, SAM doesn't always work well with very small or intricate objects. Let's consider the last type of AI tools, trackers. Trackers are tools that allow you to automatically follow the same object in a video. You mark an object in the first frame and the tracker tries to find it in the following frames and then automatically moves the box so you don't have to do it manually. In Siva, the Trans-T model is installed by default. As with the interactors, you first need to select a label and then click track to start the process. Next, you annotate the object you want to track using a bounding box. Now, to start tracking, you need to move to the next frame. At this point, the frame will be processed, and when the processing is finished, the bounding box will be moved along with the object. By switching frame by frame, you can track objects using this model. This model can be used for multiple objects at once. Annotate several cars, then move to the next frame. The tracking process will launch, and you can see at the top how many objects are being tracked simultaneously. If needed, you can disable the tracking mode for certain objects by turning off this property. After that, the tracking process will no longer run. As we can see, overall this model handles tracking these objects quite well. However, in this example, the video is sharp, the objects have fairly strong contrast with the background, and their movement is relatively smooth. Let's now look at what problems may arise when using trackers. As with detectors and interactors, the quality of tracking will depend on the quality of the image, sharpness of the edges, background, overlaps, and so on. In this example, when the cars move behind a sign, the tracker loses them and tries to locate them in the following frames, causing the bounding boxes to move to adjacent objects. So the first problem is that trackers can lose an object when it is occluded or overlapped. In the next example, an attempt was made to track runners, but due to the fact that a person's movement is not perfectly linear and the movement of arms and legs is not smooth, the tracker starts to cut them off. It's also worth mentioning that other people are present in the scene, which can confuse the tracker and cause it to make incorrect bounding box sizes for the object. Here's another example. As with the people, the horse has irregular movements, making it harder for the tracker to follow it. Let's briefly review the OpenCV tools. The first tool is Intelligent Scissors. It's an interactor that helps draw polygons. You place a point on the edge of an object and then move the mouse along its boundary. As soon as the polygon line breaks, you can go back and set an additional point to fix that segment and then continue drawing until you've traced the entire object. This tool has roughly the same limitations as SAM. The quality of the polygons will depend on the quality of the image, the background, and the contrast of the object's edges. In the Image tab, there's a Histogram Equalization button. It helps make an image clearer by increasing its overall contrast. In other words, it stretches the brightness range so that details don't blend together. This tool is especially useful for images with a very light or very dark background, where the important object is hard to distinguish. 
The last tool is the tracker. Here's how it works. First, we annotate objects using a bounding box, in this case, using a detector. After the objects have been annotated in the Open CV tools, we select Tracker and then click the track. This opens the Actions window. Here you need to enable the switch to convert all shape objects into tracks, then choose the target frame until which the tracking should be performed, and click e Run. After the tracking process is finished, you can review the results. This model works less effectively than Trans-T, but the wait time for tracking with the Tracker Mill model is shorter. In summary, the tools we've reviewed, detectors, interactors, trackers, and open CV tools, can significantly speed up the annotation process in CVAT, especially when objects are clearly distinguishable and have a simple shape. However, it's important to remember that none of these models guarantees perfect results in every situation. The quality of the annotation depends on many factors. The quality of the image, the sharpness of edges, the complexity of movement, or object shapes. This is why an annotator's diligent review, understanding of the model's limitations, and ability to choose the right tool for the specific task remain crucial. By doing this, you can not only speed up the annotation process but also maintain a high level of quality.